something a little bit different this week. Um, I had an experience which started on Wednesday of last week which was very disquieting and caused a little bit of panic to start off with but I managed to resolve the situation. I've been in Thailand now for five years and I have a Thai bank account but I've also maintained my UK bank account with one of the bigger banks. Um, give you a clue, it's based on the Iberian Peninsula and it's named after a town on the coastline. And whilst I've been aware that if you follow the strict letter of the law, you have to be domiciled in the UK to have a UK bank account, like thousands of other expats, I use a relative to provide me with a UK address, and in my case, it's my son. Now, I've never made a secret to my UK bank that I permanently reside in Thailand. When I left in 2017, I told the customer services representative at Uxbridge that I was leaving the UK for good, and what did I need to do to make sure my car still worked? and he directed me to the um, online service where I could register my residence being online but it only lasted for three months so you had to keep renewing it. But he seemed okay with that and seemed okay to me. Again, after I'd been here a few weeks I had uh, an issue with transferring money into my new Thai bank account because I needed to receive an OTP, a one-time password, for the transfer to take place. And of course, the mobile number that was registered to my account was my old UK number. So I ended up having to ring somebody at the banking's data centre, which was actually based in Belfast. And we sorted it all out, registered my Thai number, which has been on my account for five years now. And I told him that, as far as I was aware, unless something of a scene happened, I would be living in Thailand for the rest of my days. Again, it didn't seem to be a problem. I am aware of some banking legislation which I believe took place in 2018, and I'm not sure under whose jurisdiction, whether it's a UK... I've got a feeling, actually, it's an EU, because the UK was still a member of the European Union in 2018. And it may apply under a separate legislation in other countries like America, Australia, etc. But this legislation was causing the banks to more rigidly enforce the fact that you had to be domiciled in the UK to have a UK bank account. And I had noticed in the past year or so that login procedures and the number of letters and messages you were getting from your bank about confirming addresses etc etc was getting more and more and to this end I actually closed my American Express account last year and they were perfectly okay about it I said look I have a UK Amex card really I shouldn't have it if I'm living here and I know I could get a Taiwan but the shops here don't like credit cards and I certainly don't like American Express cards so I just closed my account and I got it into my head that probably at some point in time I may well have to do the same with my main UK bank account however living in Thailand you tend to adopt the um, the expression that's sort of most well known in Italian, uh, Demani, tomorrow, so in Thailand, Prungni, tomorrow. And I never actually got round to it. Anyhow, Wednesday last week I get a phone call out of the blue and it came up as Milton Keynes and I thought, who the hell do I know in Milton Keynes? And I answered the phone and it turned out it was my bank. And we sort of opened a conversation and I 
explained to the guy, well, obviously he knew, I said, you've run a tight number, so obviously you know I'm in Thailand. And the address that I use for my correspondence with you and to register my account is actually my son's address in London. I said, I said but having said that, hundreds and thousands of expats all over the world do exactly the same thing. It's not like I'm unique. So I'll be carrying on the conversation a while and um, he said, right, I need proof of your Thailand address. And I said to him, well, had you asked me a month or so ago, that would have been very easy because I could have furbished you with letters from the pension people in the UK directed to that address and from Standard Life where I have a pension plan or had a pension plan which is registered to that address, but as I've just moved, I have nothing. So we went through the usual rigmarole, utility bills, blah, 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 and um, I, I just don't understand the arrogance of the Western world that thinks the whole world, the whole world copies them, as that's the only way to do anything. Here, your name isn't on the electric bill that arrives, it isn't on the water bill that arrives. Uh, we have no gas here, no pipe gas. So it's very difficult to prove your address. So I said to the guy, well, the only thing I've got with my address on it, which has my name printed in English, but the rest of it is in Thai, is my TM30, which is a registration with the immigration office as to my home address. I said, I've been through all this with Standard Life to, to get my pension paid out. And they, in the end, accepted that as proof of address, so I'm hoping you can do the same. So he said, right, we'll send you uh, an email and you can reply to that with a copy of this document. And then he started to turn a bit nasty. So we've now gone through the um, show me your papers to I have to inform you, you have 14 days to furnish us with the information to confirm your address. So the obvious answer to that is, well, if I can't firm you with something to your complete satisfaction within 14 days, what happens then? I suppose you're going to freeze my account, are you? Oh, no, 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 we wouldn't do that. Uh, we'll just lock it. <laughs> At this point, we had a discussion on... Um, and what the hell the difference is between freezing the account and locking the account. It's just a question of semantics, really. So I was starting to get a bit annoyed by then, and I, I sort of said to the guy, look, I'm getting really fed up with this um, attitude across the complete financial sector these days that you are a money launderer unless you can prove otherwise, because to me, that's what it seems to become now. And... As I learned as a salesman, what the customer perceives is what matters, not what the actual facts are. So anyway, after the conversation had finished, I sat down there, smouldering. And one of the questions the guy had asked me was, um, you withdrew £60,000 from your bank account a few months ago. What was that for? And I just said, that's for buying a house, which is, people who watch my channel know I've recently bought this house. And after the conversation finished, and I was sat there, as I say, smouldering, I thought, what the hell's it got to do with this guy? What I would do my money for? It's my money, I'll do what I want with it. And then I thought more and more about this 14-day thing. And I thought, I can't risk this because this is going to jeopardise my whole situation of staying in Thailand and maintaining the requisite bank balance to get my, my visa renewed. So I then went on a journey of making one withdrawal from my account um, via my internet banking and that went through okay. I thought, good. So following that, as I could only withdraw £20,000 at a time, we had a long queue of 
withdrawals, which I spread over five days to um, make sure I didn't ring too many alarm bells. And I've managed to extract all my money from my account. I was fortunate, or probably I've made some good planning in the, in the past, to have a couple of places where I could move that money to. Um, I opened an account a couple of years ago with one of the app-based challenger banks in the UK, which seemed less tied down to the strictness of all the rules. And I also have an account with TransferWise, who I now just call Wise, who uh, I've used for all my money transfers from UK banks to Thailand banks since I moved here. And recently, they introduced a uh, facility to be able to keep balances with them in the multitude of currencies. So I have a, a Great British Pound balance and I have a Thai balance, Thai Baht balance. And the good thing is the TransferWise account is registered at a Thai address, so I know I've got no issues with them. So if you're an expat living overseas, make sure you have a plan to get your money out of your UK bank and into somewhere else at short notice. I have a friend who's moved to Bulgaria before I moved to Thailand. I think he's been there eight or nine years now and he banks with the same bank as me and his mobile number for his one-time passwords is a Bulgarian mobile number. But whether the fact that Bulgaria is in the European Union or not counts, I don't know. But having said that, the UK no longer is. So I've warned him, just in case it happens to him as well, but he's had no problems so far. It seems to me that the ability to move money around and generally live your life is getting more and more watched by Big Brother. And as I said earlier, the, the impression that you get is that if you move more than a couple of quid anywhere, the first thing that people seem to think is that it's money laundering. The pension I got paid out, standard life, the hoops I had to, to jump through to get them to pay out. And it was only £12,000. It wasn't like it was a fortune. It wasn't something I was reliant on for my day-to-day -day life. In fact, I've forgotten I'd had it. It was an added bonus and in fact paid for the extension to this house. So anyhow, that's my story of dealing with UK banks while living abroad. As I said, I'm sure it applies to other countries in the West. And hopefully my story might forewarn you and help you make sure that you don't get stuck with your money frozen in a UK bank account and been able to access it. Thanks very much for watching. I hope this has been of some help. If it's helped one person, then I'm very happy. Please give the video a thumbs up if it's been useful and why not consider subscribing to my channel as well. Hope to see you again very soon. I post videos usually every week or so on living my life in Thailand. Bye for now and see you again.